There, now it's recording. So, when Jesus Christ was on the earth, he set up a church. And it was a perfect church, perfectly, you know, set up with revelation, with prophets and apostles. And when Jesus Christ was around, people started trying to change what he changed and tried to contradict him. So they would try and change it. But he was there to change it back, so it didn't change. And then, you know, he died and performed that great sacrifice for us. And so people immediately started trying to change it. But the prophet, the, there were apostles on the earth to be able to change it back. And that's what a lot of the New Testament is. The apostles changing it back. All the, all the epistles and books of John and all that. Or them writing, hey, you're not doing this right, you need to do this. Then they went and killed and banished all the apostles. So when someone changed something up, they weren't there to, to fix it. And so someone else would change something. And someone else would change something. And it would just keep going and going until, you know, it's a mess. And it doesn't look anything like what Jesus Christ set up. And people look at it and say, ah, we have the true church. See, it, doesn't it look great? Someone else would say, no, no, that's not it at all. See, it needs to be like this. And maybe like this. See, look at all that white on top. That means that's much, much closer. And um, there were a lot of people, you know, who were just completely dissatisfied with the churches they had because they were, you know, flawed quite often. And that's why we have so many churches today. There are 43 quintillion different combinations on a Rubik's Cube. Sometimes it seems there's almost that many churches. Okay. But um, this confusion went on for a while until uh, in the mid-1800s, there was a boy in upstate New York by the name of Joseph Smith. And he had been trying to figure out which church he should join. And he would go over to one, ch you know, one congregation and listen to them. And the preacher would say, oh, we're the true church because of this scripture right here. And then he would go to another congregation of a different faith. And they would say, oh, no, that guy was a moron. This church is true because of that of this scripture right here, and he would use the exact same scripture that the other guy used before. And this really confused young Joseph, and he wandered around and tried going to so many different things, and it was just really hopeless. And then one day he was reading in the Bible, in, you know, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, which reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally or freely, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and toss. Never did any scripture enter a man's heart like this one did to Joseph Smith. And he reflected on it again and again and decided that he had two choices. First, he could wander around in darkness for the rest of his days, not knowing you know, where he should go to find the truth. Or he could take James up on his promise and ask God which church he should join. And so he decided that that would be what he did. And so uh, he went into a grove of trees near his home, and uh, he described his experience like this. Uh, as he prayed, he described his experience like this. I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head above the brightness of the sun which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages, whose brightness and glory defied all description standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ appeared to Joseph Smith in that, garden, in that grove when he prayed for them. And, yeah, you know, if this happened to me, it would take me a while before I got my, you know, my focus back. Because this wasn't what he expected at all. He expected, you know, that, that, that still small voice of the Holy Spirit to whisper to him. But Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ did appear to him. And when he finally was able to ask, you know, his question of which church should I join, he was commanded that he should join none of them. For, you know, they draw near unto me with their lips. They're... They look kind of close, but their hearts are far from me. And Joseph Smith was to be called as a prophet in this day and age to restore the church to what it was. And so when people would try and change it, there would be a prophet on the earth to change it back. And I know this to be true.
because I have prayed about this for myself and I know that J Jesus Christ is our Savior that Heavenly Father is a kind and loving God and that Joseph Smith was his first prophet in this new dispensation and Thomas S. Monson is our prophet today I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ Amen mm -hmm.